Now, according to the Eastern Cape Education, it has two cases involving four pupils suspected to have helped others answer metric exam questions. The province's education MEC, Fundile Gatte, joins us now in studio to expand a little bit more on this. MEC, good evening. Good to have you, and thank you very much for your time. Yes, good evening. Good evening. Well, uh, MEC, the questions, of course, are um, uh, largely around um, uh, the implications, right, of uh, the... Uh, Eastern Cape teachers that have been implicated in alleged uh, metric exam uh, cheating. First and foremost, I mean, wh what is your impression of what actually took place? We, we have conducted um, a lot of investigations uh, through the DPE um, and um, from where we are standing, um, it's just a one case which was a bit worrying, uh, often since we are senior secondary school in Manfre, where there has been um, a suspected help of the learners uh, by others. In fact, it's not a group, it's not a group copying uh, per se, but it's a question of a common answering methodology, which then becomes suspicious, uh, probably it's because of the lack of sight of the invigilators um, when those learners were writing that, that paper at that particular time. Yeah. But in general, um, as a province, we have performed quite very well in terms of managing uh, the quality and the standard of the examinations for grade 12. Yeah. So you, you, you are, uh, in, in a sense, saying the reports that put the number at at least 32 Eastern Cape teachers is, is, is not a correct number. No, no. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a correct number. It's a correct number, but um, what I'm saying is the, the learners are not that much. Yeah. Uh, it's a question of uh, the teachers that has to be undergoing some form of investigations further, and uh, of course some form of disciplinary measures uh, if, necess if, if that necessitate. Yeah. Precisely because in terms of the policy in basic education for examinations, um, the most affected is the learner, because once that learner is, is in one way or another caught or suspected, investigations go on and prove beyond reasonable doubts. That learner is exempted uh, in writing uh, three consecutive examinations in, the, in, 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 in this country. So that's, 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 that's my only worry, um, because it means if that learner is about 18 years old now, she or he might get back at the age of 20 years, which is against the police in basic education. So that's why we must always encourage um, teachers and vigilators yeah. to up the game. Right. What, what could have happened that could lead to 32 of uh, your educators being caught up in, 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 in such unfortunate incident that could jeopardize the future of learners? What we are suspecting, because uh, remember Malusis has been uh, engaged on that and they were just issuing now uh, the statement. And uh, we, were, we were of the view that we will wait for their investigations concretely uh, because we don't want to jeopardize or create uh, an impression uh, either of defense uh, for, those, uh, for, those, for those teachers. But uh, generally it's a conduct that uh, I feel very strongly probably the country will have to look very closely into um, because of the serious uh, impact that it has, not just in terms of the grade 12 learners, but also in terms of the future of those learners. Because hence I'm saying that some of them might not be able to come back into the system yes. precisely because of age. Um, they will have to go for private schooling um, doing a kind of an arrangement for grade 12, which is not a normal practice that you would, you would, you would, you would subject um, a people uh, like those uh, rural kids like, uh, that, that comes from that area. So if we look at uh, the context of, of, of where the Eastern Cape was, 2016, 59.3% pass rate. It gradually improved to 64.9% in 2017, 2018, 70.5%. 2019, 76.8. There was a drop in 2020, which could be attributed to uh, possibly the COVID-19 lockdown, 68.1%. 2021 went up again to 73%. Uh, Do you think there is pressure on your educators to, to, to achieve these rates and therefore uh, they, that could lead to this kind of behavior? 
we we must accept um, the the schooling system that we have adopted as a country is quite competitive, um, quite dynamic, of course, but compelling as well uh, that uh, people must be able to provide a quality of output. If you observed uh, right through the clock across the country uh, between uh, July and uh, October, end of October, you will see that teachers are, are, are sleeping in schools. That tells you the, the immense pressure that they have and also the desire to get results. Mm. And uh, at times, some get into becoming more of uh, disciplinarians. Yes. Uh, which then puts them into a, a bigger stake of, 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 discipli of discipline in terms of the regulations and legislations in education. Yeah. Uh, so it's a quite a tiny threat uh, that uh, people are confronted with, but of course it's something that uh, as educators we are, we are, we are, we are uh, quite very fond of it, and, uh, but the, the competition itself brought a lot of pressure to them. I, on that one, I can, I can assure you. Yeah. Uh, let's just clear that when you say teachers are sleeping in school, you don't mean they're sleeping in class. You're meaning they spend uh, their full day there. They even uh, literally l l sleep in school to, to assist them. I mean sleeping. You mean sleeping at the job? I mean sleeping because uh, you'd find that majority of schools in rural provinces where you don't have hostels, they start schooling it at uh, probably half past seven, break out at uh, two o'clock uh, afternoon, come back at six up to either level or twelve. So that's what I mean. Right. So hence grade twelves, you'll find that grade twelves have got matrasses arranged yeah. uh, for camping in I, those I schools. see, I see what you mean by that. Yes. All right. So yeah. I'm saying it's, a, it's, yeah. it's quite a, a very much a unprecedented kind of an arrangement, yeah. 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 which we needed to, to, to compliment them about it. As, as far as, uh, of course, the, 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 the state of um, education facilities in, in the Eastern Cape, a lot has been said around what needs to be upgraded there. And, and uh, as far as uh, your plans, where are you right now in terms of infrastructure? Now, in terms of infrastructure, we're performing quite very well now. Um, we, we have handed over more than 32 schools um, the last financial year. Today, I was handing another school, uh, by the way, in East London, a, a newly established, which has to start on, the, on Wednesday, yeah. a private one through the public-private partnership. We are supposed to be handing over about five of them before the 30th of, uh, of March. So we are a bit aggressive uh, in terms of the infrastructure development in the province. The only grey area which is a worrying factor for me is that we, our schooling system in the province in the past have actually resulted into a number of schools which you can regard them as unviable small schools. Uh, almost every village has got a school, uh, and some have two. And if you look into the model of the schooling system we have in the country, which um, Elena determines the capacity of the school, you find that all those schools are not going to be able to produce the quality that you want. So we were reconfiguring some of them uh, into measures, 22 of them, um, so that we, 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 we can uh, cluster six of them into one school. Okay. Um, and, 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 and that helped us a lot because a bigger school is with bigger resources gives you the capacity to, to do whatever that you want uh, in, terms of the, in terms of the policies that we have adopted as a country in terms of education. Yeah. So in a space of um, two to three years, we would have closed up issues relating to either absence of uh, dilapidated schools or uh, much schools in the province. By the way, out of uh, 200 uh, ACD schools that have been built by um, the country uh, via the presidential um, funding, uh, 164 are in the province. So other provinces are sharing um, 30-something. 
So I'm saying it, that's the extent by which the province has been engaged on the, on the infrastructure development uh, in terms of the city projects. So, so the last time uh, we engaged with your department, of course, we were raising this issue. Yes. Uh, at the time, I think it was 1,500 schools that yes. were still having pit latrines. How are you dealing with that background? We have aggressively dealt with it via the safety program that uh, the minister has actually given handy to us. Um, in particular, Eastern Cape, uh, KZN, Limpombo, and Northwest. Yeah. Um, currently, we are engaged um, on 458 um, schools that are engaged on the air pollution facility provisioning. Uh, they are supposed to be completed as well uh, by the third week of April. We have dealt with um, 300 and, uh, 326 in the previous academic year. So we were a bit sluggish during the, the COVID-19 period uh, because of the shutdowns. And, uh, but if that COVID was not there by now, we would have dealt with that 1,500 because statistics uh, indicates that at least uh, the money was there and the capacity in terms of the uh, constructors was there and the willingness in terms of stabilizing um, the communities. Because sometimes the projects are delayed out of a misunderstanding uh, between the providers in the form of government, uh, the social facilitation process. So we have mastered the art and skill of that. And hence I'm saying, uh, in a short space of time, uh, that will be history uh, in the province. MSC, we appreciate your time. Thanks so much for Thanks. coming Thanks so much. and uh, joining us uh, tonight uh, here. That was uh, the Eastern Cape MEC for Education, uh, Fundile Gata.